science class and to our series on motion and measurement of distance. In this video, we will learn about motion and rest and explore the different types of motion that occur in the world around us. Have you ever wondered why objects move the way they do? Let's find out together. A car moving on a road, a swing in a playground, or even bees and butterflies buzzing in the air? Motion is everywhere, but sometimes it's not so easy to see. Visible and invisible motion. Think about the second's hand on a watch. It moves slowly, but its motion is easy to notice. The hour hand, however, moves so slowly that its motion is difficult to see. On the other hand, some objects move so fast that we cannot see their motion at all, like the blades of a fan spinning at high speed. Even the Earth rotating on its axis is an example of invisible motion. So, how do we describe motion? Motion happens when an object changes its position in space. It's important to note that motion is relative. This means an object might be in motion relative to one object, but stationary relative to another. For example, imagine you're sitting in a bus. A person standing on the side of the road sees you and everyone on the bus as moving. But the person sitting next to you in the bus seems still to you. This is what we call the relativity of motion. What is rest? Now, let's talk about rest. Objects that do not change their position with respect to their surroundings are said to be at rest. But even when you're sitting still watching this video, you are actually in motion because the Earth is rotating on its axis and orbiting the Sun. Now that we understand the concepts of motion and rest, let's take a closer look at the different ways things around us move. Did you know that motion comes in many different types? Objects around us move in unique ways, and each type of motion tells us something interesting about how they move. Here are the seven types of motion we'll be exploring today. One, translatory motion. Second, rotational motion. Three, circular motion. Fourth, periodic motion. Fifth, oscillatory motion. Six, random motion. Seven, combined motion. Let's discuss each type of motion one by one with simple examples to make it easy to understand. Let's begin with translatory motion, which happens when all parts of an object move in the same direction at the same speed. Translatory motion can be divided into two types. Rectilinear motion. This is motion along a straight line. For example, a car driving on a straight road is in rectilinear motion. Curvilinear motion. This occurs when an object moves along a curved path. For instance, think about a train moving on a curved track through hills. Another example is a ball thrown into the air, which follows a curvilinear path as it rises and falls. Next, we have rotational motion, where an object spins around an axis. Different parts of the object cover different distances in the same time. For example, when a top spins, the outer part covers more distance than the inner part, but both rotate around the same axis. Other examples include the hands of a clock, the spinning wheels of a bullock cart, or the rotation of the earth on its axis. Now, let's look at circular motion. Circular motion is when an object moves along a circular path around a fixed point outside itself. For example, if you tie a thread to a ball and whirl it around, the ball moves in a circle. Other examples are the moon revolving around the earth, or the earth revolving around the sun in the solar system. Another example can be a car moving along a circular racetrack is experiencing circular motion. The object moves in a closed loop, constantly changing direction. Periodic motion. Periodic motion occurs when an object repeats its movement after regular time intervals. For example, a swing in a playground moves back and forth at regular intervals. Similarly, the pendulum of a clock and even the Earth's rotation and revolution are examples of periodic motion. Next is oscillatory motion, where an object moves back and forth or side to side. When you ring a hanging bell, it swings from side to side. This back and forth movement is oscillatory motion. A few other examples include the motion of a swing or the vibrating skin of a tabla or up and down movement of a seesaw. Random motion. Random motion happens when there's no fixed direction or pattern. For example, a butterfly flitting around a garden 
a hockey player chasing a ball, all show random motion because their movement is unpredictable. Combined motion. Finally, we have combined motion, where an object shows two types of motion at the same time. For example, the wheels of a moving car rotate while also moving forward, showing both rotational and translatory motion. Another example is a sewing machine. The wheel rotates while the needle moves up and down, combining rotational and oscillatory motion. Isn't that amazing? So, students, we've learned about motion and rest, as well as the different types of motion, including translatory, rotational, circular, periodic, oscillatory, random, and combined motion. Motion is all around us, from the spinning of a top to the movement of the Earth. Here's something to think about. Can you identify an example of combined motion in your daily life? Keep observing the world around you, and you'll discover these motions everywhere. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next lesson.